Just after Adam's fall, in response to Adam's sin, God said in Genesis 3, 22 and 23, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out from the garden to work the ground from which he was taken. As was noted in the last video, this passage shows that God wanted to prevent Adam from eating fruit from the tree of life, which would have entailed that he would live forever. That point, however, tells us something about the tree of life itself. It tells us that the tree was an offer of living forever if Adam partook of it. We've been considering various aspects of Reformed Covenant theology and focusing so far on the doctrine of the covenant of works. We've seen how God made a covenant with Adam, how that covenant required Adam's perfect obedience to the law, how God offered Adam incorruptible life for his obedience, and in the last video, how God's consecration of the Sabbath was one way in which God presented that offer of that reward to Adam. In this video, we turn to consider how the tree of life itself was another way that God presented the offer of incorruptible life to Adam. So, we can get a, a clearer picture, uh, a better perspective on how the tree of life offered the covenantal reward to Adam if we survey each point of the story involving that tree. So, Genesis 2, 8 and 9 says, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is fitting that we would consider this aspect of the covenant of works last because it brings our focus back to the actual events, the historical things that occurred. This passage that we just read in Genesis centers the garden narrative around the two trees and puts us on alert that the story about Adam revolves around a story about these two trees. God made Adam, then he planted a garden in Eden. Then he put Adam in that garden where Adam is confronted with the choice between, between two trees. The two trees highlight the tension of his probation. He would be permitted to eat of all the trees in the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was forbidden as we saw in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Even though Adam would be permitted to eat from all the other trees, he had to earn the right to eat from the tree of life. Th that quest to earn that right encapsulates the covenant of works. Adam's perfect obedience would obtain the right to eat from the tree of life, which would mean that he had been justified in God's sight and he would enter confirmed incorruptible life as he joined God in the consecrated and eternal Sabbath rest. We, we see both that Adam had to earn the right to eat from the tree of life and that the tree of life symbolized that heightened eternal life from Genesis 3.22. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat, and live forever. First, we can gather that although Adam would be permitted to eat from all the trees in the garden save one, he had to earn the right to eat from this one uh, foremost tree, uh, ma mainly from that little word, lest. So uh, this Hebrew, this word in Hebrew most often means preventing something from happening that had not yet previously occurred. Furthermore, we see that God did not want Adam to take 
also from this tree. So there really was a choice that Adam had to make between the two special trees and which one uh, from which he would prefer to eat. As the creepy knight at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade said in one of the biggest understatements ever, he chose poorly. Now second though, we can see that earning the right to eat from this tree symbolized the reward that Adam would have earned uh, even in Genesis 3.22, as God designated the consequence of eating from it as living forever. We've already thought about the nature of incorruptible life that was offered to Adam. But here we see that God presented this offer in the tree of life. Certainly we should not think of this tree as having magic powers or something like that to make Adam live forever if he ate. Rather, this tree was the sacrament of the covenant of works. It was the tangible marker that set forth God's promised reward in a tangible way if Adam met the conditions. The point is confirmed if we consider the other place in Scripture that highlights the tree of life, the book of Revelation. It is not insignificant in itself that the tree of life features in Scripture's opening narratives and returns in the Bible's account of the end of history. Revelation 21 describes the arrival of the New Jerusalem when Christ returns, but Revelation 22 expands upon that new create on on what that new creation looks like. So Revelation 22, 1 and 2 says, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. In Genesis, the tree was in the midst of the garden. But here, it has, at the end of history, it has grown to span across the river. Whereas Adam was supposed to fill the earth with the new creation kingdom as, as part of his task, but left the garden as a small patch of paradise that was blocked to his posterity by angels with flaming swords, Christ installs the global new creation kingdom that Adam was supposed to achieve, which is symbolized in the expanded tree of life. We even see that the tree of life requires that we obtain the right to eat from it. Revelation 22, 14 says, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to eat the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. In the present circumstances, we need justification that includes the forgiveness of sins, which Jesus grants to us by his work. In justification, we receive a clean robe from Christ, which grants the right to eat from the tree of life, which grants the right to enter God's eternal kingdom. The tree of life symbolized the reward offered to Adam and marks the reward that we will receive from Jesus as well.